Hey, and welcome back to Options Made Simple 201. In this video, we're gonna kind of move out of the discussion on just general selling of options and start pulling it together into some strategies. I've called this particular lesson the ultimate dividend. Why? Because by the time we get to the end of it, you're gonna see how you can collect consistent money from the stocks that you own over and over and over. Kind of like a dividend, but I call it the ultimate dividend because you can do it repeatedly. So here's our agenda. We're gonna talk about the covered trade. We're gonna talk about exploring the covered call, and then we'll talk about the ultimate dividend, and we'll wrap it up with some homework here. So let's talk about the covered trade so you kind of understand this strategy a little bit more. In the last class, we learned about shorting options. We learned that we can make a profit as the option goes down in price, just the same way that we would make an, a, a profit as the stock goes down if we short the stock. If we short the stock, we sell it at a higher price, and then we buy it back to, to close or buy to cover at a lower price. Same thing happens when we short an option. We short the option, we sell it at a price, and we're wanting that option price to go down over time. We call that shorting the option. Uh, when we short calls, it's a bearish trade. When we short puts, it's a bullish trade. The reason, your call option is gonna go down as the stock goes down, so we're wanting the option to go down if we shorted it, so we're gonna short a call, we're gonna want the stock to go down. If we short a put, we want the put to go down. The only way that's gonna happen is if the stock goes up. And so, when we short puts, it's a bullish trade. When we short calls, it is a bearish trade. Now we also talked about what you're selling as time. Look at this time picture here. We've talked about this many, many times. You see the orange line illustrates what happens to the time decay as you're getting closer and closer to expiration. And so what we're really selling whenever we think about and whenever we talk about uh, shorting options is we're really selling the time decay component of the option. We also talked about the three-dimensional pricing factor of options. If, if you remember back to Options Made Simple 101, the option needs to have three things happen. We've got to have time work in our favor, we've got to have the strike price working in our favor, and of course we've got to have a trend moving in our direction. When we're shorting options, all of those things are working in our favor rather than against us. And so the fact that when you, um, when you short options, so many things have to work together, it puts the odds in your favor. Time is working in your favor. You don't actually need a trend. It could be trending or it could be a stagnant trade. It's fine either way. And the strike price, that's very easy to control because you can get into the right strike price when you short these options. So in a lot of ways, shorting options becomes a relatively easy play. Take a look over here at this picture. Remember the picture that we talked about with the spiders? We sell ourselves a 190 put. So now we're obligated to go out and buy the stock at 190. Well, if the stock goes up or if the stock goes sideways, no big deal. That puts the odds in our favor. It's two out of three directions that this trade could go. And if it goes either of those directions, then we're still gonna realize our full, full profit on the trade. Now, if the stock goes down, it can go down just a little bit, but if it goes down substantially, that's when we start to get into trouble by selling the put option. So the same thing is true here with a call option. If the stock goes down, great. Nobody's gonna wanna come behind it here and buy it at 51 when they could come out on the open market and buy it at 48 or 49. And so we're gonna be shorting the call in the case that we think the stock's going down, as long as the stock goes down or as long as the stock goes sideways, we've got a two out of three chances that we're gonna make profit on this trade. Now, if the stock goes up, well, then we're gonna be getting into the situation where we have a lot of obligations coming in. We're obligated to, to sell it at 51 here while the stock maybe is running really high there. And so uh, that's the downside scenario that we talked about in the last class as well. If we remind ourselves of the risk profile, take a look here at this risk profile and realize with a short call, you've got a maximum risk or maximum reward, sorry. You've got a maximum reward as the stock goes down and that maximum reward is gonna equal the amount of premium that you received from selling the option. Yet, if the stock goes up, if you shorted the call, what happens? Stock goes up, the higher the stock goes, the more you end up losing on that call. The opposite is what happens with the short put. You've got a maximum profit or maximum reward, and that maximum reward, again, is gonna be equal to how much premium you sold the option for, and yet if the stock goes down, you're reaching uh, all sorts of unknown uh, risks that are happening there. So this is the risk profile, and because we've got this risk profile, shorting options takes a bad name. A lot of people have a bad idea about it. So what I wanna do is I wanna start show, showing you ideas of how we can limit that risk profile and how we can still use the idea, the general benefits of making money on two out of the three trades 
two out of three directions, I should say, but maybe without taking as much risk on, and we'll start to kind of build out the different strategic uses from there. But remember, this risk profile is undesirable, and so if we take these straight naked options, that high risk profile, it can um, really get in the way. So how can we lower it? We can lower that risk profile by covering the trade, and that's what I want to start sharing with you as we get into this set of videos.